Hey, welcome to Weld.com. I want to do a comparison. Uh, I mean, this is kind of a two-part thing. I'm going to do a couple of welds. The first one, uh, both of them are going to be outside corner joints. Both of them I'm going to lean exactly the same. I'm going to try to keep the two of them exactly uh, the fit up and everything. And what we're doing is somebody had asked a question about a Harbor Freight wire versus a, a Lincoln wire. Both of them are gasless flux core. So the two part is I want to, I just want to run both of them on this outside corner joint just to kind of look at art characteristics and see how they run and, and feel and react with this type of joint. The second part of this series, I'm, I intend to, I want to do a fillet weld. I think this has been done before, but I want to do a fillet weld and cut and etch the samples. I want to look at depth of fusion versus the weld itself. So this is kind of a two-part thing, one outside corner, one fillet. Uh, one of them is just going to kind of see and listen and, and watch the art characteristics, same machine. Uh, the second part of it, we want to cut and etch and, and look at things. Uh, not so much grain structure, but we want to look and see that depth of fusion. So let me get my gear on. I'll be right back. I'm getting ready to run this weld here. I've, I've, you know, I've leaned this a little bit more for camera perspective. Could weld it flat. I just, it's a common joint configuration and a common use here. Uh, we'd run this slightly downhill just to kind of blend these two edges here. It's a outside corner. So um, my electrical stick out probably going to be about three eighths of an inch on this gasless flux core wire. Somebody's going to ask, well, why are you running gasless flux core wire with a nozzle? Gee whiz, that's the only way I can keep my contact tip in this particular gun, so I have to have the nozzle on there. The nozzle serves no purpose other than keeping the contact tip in there. Plus, it insulates it in case I accidentally touch something here, so it's, it's all good. And I understand why somebody would ask that, um, but again, this is on this particular gun it's the only way to keep the contact tip attached so here we go The first thing I noticed about this was, this is the Harbor Freight wire. It was running 19 volts and 200 on the wire feed speed. As far as the setting, I thought that was pretty close, the way it was, should have reacted. Normal spatter, normal amount of smoke deposit. I do want to go buff this off. Uh, I was watching my edges here to make sure that we were uh, catching both the edges for the most part but the the main thing that I noticed wire was sitting here jumping around it's not like it just came out smooth it's like I had a, a arc length that was going back and forth I don't know why that is I pre-tested this feed before I uh, before I made the weld so I'm not sure what that was all about let me change wires buff this off and we'll do a side-by-side -side comparison. We'll make the other wire, or the other, the other weld with the Lincoln MP211 wire. Be right back. Same joint, same angle, same everything. I just want to, again, I'm, I'm just looking to see how it runs. I'm looking, at, we'll buff them both off and compare them. I'll give you my take on it, and we'll talk about a few things here.
I don't think I need to say a word at this point about what's going on here. Matter of fact, I'm going to stop right there. I did have a little bit of a broken tack on bottom and it opened up some. Let me buff these both off. I'll come back and we'll talk about it here in just a second. Be right back. Okay, we have a comparison here of two different brands of a gasless flux core wire. And you're probably gonna you're probably gonna want to hear the final result here and want me to make some wild determination. And I'm not being funny and I don't want to disappoint, but I'm gonna tell you, take your pick. Seriously, I, I see the same thing in both wires. And if I showed you <clears throat> zoomed in, I marked here's I know we welded on some other parts and I told you I was just gonna do an outside corner joint to keep it consistent. We've made other test welds and welds for other videos on here. Um, if I just showed you certain parts, like between here and here of one weld and here and here of another, and hey, you pick, you know. Can you do that? It'd be kind of hard. You really kind of need to see it under the hood. But what I specifically noticed on both wires, one was worse than the other one, was the fact that we've got a small spool here. It's a two pound spool. Um, and you have a lot of what we call cast where the wire if i just let this loose it'd want to spring and go all over the place and i'm sure some of you've had that happen and then you put it in your your gun and it, you're wondering why it's not feeding out very good and i think this may have happened on both spools i don't know um, but i noticed both spools of wire had this inconsistent arc length and, and I don't think it had anything to do with the settings uh, we had a good ground we had a good joint configuration when it welded it welded like it's supposed to you know the normal spatter and the normal smoke uh, both the weld profiles look essentially the same so therefore I'm gonna say hey good luck you know I mean there's other brands uh, I think they're all, I think any brand that you get in the gasless flux core is going to look like this. It's going to sound like this. I'm not blaming either brand for the spooling or anything like that. I'm just, again, I'm remaining neutral. You know, from what I saw under the weld hood, I thought that they ran real similar. Uh, I've run a fair amount of this on various machines, Lincoln machines, ESOB machines. Uh, Miller 1 or 110 or the 110 volt machines. Uh, I like doing it occasionally, especially when I have some portable thing to do at somebody's house and I don't have 220 and I don't want to haul a great big machine out. This works, this works great. So, you know, pick a brand. Be careful when you're unspooling your wire that you don't get a what we call a bird nest or let this thing go so it unspools because you may see that. Again, to review, I can't answer the why this wasn't coming out nice and smooth because I went through all the tensioning and my gun was nice and straight. I had a good clean contact tip in. Again, if somebody's going to mention or ask the question, why are you doing this with the nozzle on when it's gasless flux core, it's because that's the only way that this contact tip will stay attached to the gun is when it's threaded in and shouldered up by the nozzle. So. You know, I like them both. Um, one didn't feed near as well as the other one. But again, I, I, you know, you're getting the same results. And I don't, I'm not picking either one or showing you which one which. The one that didn't feed as good, I think welded, the weld looks better on it. So the second part of this, we will go in and I want to grab two fresh spools of wire. I want to I make sure that they're both feeding really good if they continue to do that fine but i do want to look at depth of fusion if i'm going to make a comparison on two of these even though this is a non-critical application if somebody wants to ask and they're curious about depth of fusion i want to do two fillet welds i'm going to cut them and polish that grain structure a little bit i want to etch so that we can compare depth of fusion i doubt you'll see 
very much of a difference to weigh one over another brand. I don't know. Well, it's a good experiment though. So again, I hope this helps. Uh, I hope we answered the question and uh, thanks for watching weld.com. Make sure you subscribe to the videos. New videos come out every Monday. Thank you.